Hey folks, dude here, and well, it's time for another episode of, uh, of all things, it's been a while, so we're gonna do an episode of Knife Blog. Oh, today's episode of Knife Blog, we're gonna be talking about, of all things, well, there's only one way to say it, and I actually did have a chance to get one of the aftermarket, read like aftermarket, very aftermarket, Russian machetes for, of all things, good and proper, we're talking about the Russian Spetsnaz machete. Let me try to hold this thing in such a way you can see everything. Uh, basically what it is, is this sucker is massive construction. It is pretty much an edge all the way around. It has this big front, black, uh, big, big front blunt edge here that can be used as a shovel. It has this axe style edge here, which could be used for an axe, obviously. The inside does have some actual small tooth elements that I guess you could probably use for like a grab-and-go kind of CQB kind of a thing. Does actually have a moderately edged inside. This thing is not sharp, okay? But I hear this thing is stronger than all get out. The steel is probably somewhere harder than woodpecker lips. And it is a high carbon, well, steel. Now, well, what's on the other side here? Okay, obviously you do have ability to use this as a protractor. So you can hang. There's a hole here, a hole here, a hole here. And what these things used to be known for is known as a Spetsnatch slash pilot's Machete. So a survival machete. Obviously, we bolt into the pilot's ejection sheet, or it could be using this hole to bolt to the ejection sheet. And you can use this thing to figure out like angle of declination, like shooting from here, which actually does have a hole on board. And you can flip this little guy right here, which is the ice guy. And you do actually have something that you could use, kind of like a gun sight. Or if you're shooting from this point to the actual knife point, you're actually using a peep sight. So you can say, okay, well, this mountain here looks to be about, mm, 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 that's about that high. And then you go down here and you go, okay, it's that many degrees. I'm going to estimate it is that many meters high by that many meters away by using triangulation. If you're a good enough person with math, you can do that stuff. Now, the basic construction on this thing is built hell for stout, like ridiculously overbuilt. Let me move my ticker juice. <laughs> These sheets were available on eBay for a while. And it is basically just a nylon sheath, but the construction on it is actually pretty decent. Has a couple of strap holes on board, so you could actually probably, you know, kind of do that tactical thing or hanging up somewhere or hanging on your, you know, your LBE gear or hanging on your, like, you know, your, your Moly gear or something along those lines. It is actually a very decent construction. Now, when I actually bought one of them, the other one that I got was from a company known as Sovetsky. Sovetsky. And it was kind of like a joke thing. Obviously, it was... Made in the United States. And it was kind of like a joke name for Russian stuff. Sovetsky. And they had all kinds of really, really cool stuff. Now, in terms of the actual sheath, this one is actually pretty well built. But, but, bumping the microphone. But, this is a sawtooth back edge. And it is going to rip this sheath well, from a-hole to appetite in short order. Now, the basic construction on this is as such. It is a hollow handle knife. So, you can unscrew here, and some people actually did luck out and get the survival kits on board, which actually had like fishing line, fish hooks, and I think in some cases, strike anywhere matches. And you can see this is actually a hollow handle. Pretty good depth. Hopefully you guys can kind of see in the deep marky depths there. But it is a hollow handle. I'm going to say that's probably every bit of about mm, 25 millimeters or so. so. Just right around about an inch. You can flip this guy around on its holder. And I'm not going to do that, but you can flip this guy around, and it becomes a very, very wicked awl with a hole in the middle. And it actually can be used for, like, sewing. It can be used for, like, ice pick activities. You actually do have this part here that can be used for usage of, like, a chisel or used as a screwdriver. So, some very good basic engineering here. The handle, the handle is Bakelite, okay? So, if you guys know anything about Bakelite from time immemorial... It is the old school plastic that they used to make stuff out of back before they really had plastic. And I'm being very gentle with this thing because, well, they've ended production on these things some years ago. They are a finite item. You see these things crop up on eBay from time to time. And every once in a blue moon, you can luck out and actually obtain one. The actual balance on this thing is, well, to be charitable, it is, it is ridiculous. That's the balance point on this thing, okay? In other words, the balance point is like two almost... Closing it on a three inches in front of the choy. The choy actually is a moderately sharpened choy. So you can actually do some kind of, like, you know, kind of woodworking activities there. The teeth on this thing are actually very sharp. I've heard people say that the saw on this thing sucks. 
It is much better to chop with this rather than to cut with this. The handle in cross section is pretty much just a square block. It has got the worst, absolute worst Russian style ergonomics of anything on planet Earth you will ever find. And charitably, these things were produced back in the 50s. So you're talking something that's very built very much like an AK-47, you know, mag truck meets Russian execution kind of construction. More is better than less. More is better than anything. More will beat anything. It is not a light piece. I'm going to say this thing is every bit of a kilo and change. Okay, so 2.2 pounds. It is a tank. I have very large hands in terms of palm size. I have very large hands in terms of palm size versus finger aspect. So for me to grab this thing, it works. Now, the average size hand will not wrap around this thing comfortably. For me, it is charitably usable, but it is not something that I'm going to want to hack all day with because it is going to beat your hands to death. It is not a good design. Now, because I had one of them, I figured I probably should have two of them. Now, this is one of the boxes that actually were sold by, and I actually did know a Russian chick. I gave her the instructions to translate. I never heard back from her again. She quit at the place I knew her from. But she translated this from Russian to say something to the effect of, to use in the aid of... Let me just right side up here to use to the aid of others or something along those lines and uh, i really need like to find the instruction sheets every once in a while pictures crop up on on youtube uh on also on google I mean, i'm sorry video there's a video on youtube currently about this and he's got a lot more views than i do on this thing but there is pictures that crop up every time to time on you know google for people that have these things and actually show them now actually i'm gonna crack this thing open so you guys can see it is a very very russian construction style box Obviously, we have the, you know, the, the oiled paper in there, and obviously, we do have a pristine reed, like unused, rusky, rusky machete. Now, you can see these two things side by side. Obviously, this one's seen a lot more travels than this one. This one's very pretty. It's still covered in the preservative cosmoline or what have you and whatnot. Also, the handle color is slightly different. So, let me try to do this better so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. The handle color is even slightly different. So this one being the used one, this one being the pristine one. I'm thinking this guy's going to probably just stay in the box. Now, this one actually does have a cereal on board. Hopefully you guys are kind of seeing that. I have some Russian on there. You know, is that the, the, the backwards, the nine, the backwards, what is this? Uh, backwards G upside down, the backwards N008. So I guess that would be like a serial number of some variety. So this one actually has a cereal. Let me see what the other one's got on board. Give me one second here. I'm trying to be charitably nice. These things just pretty much sit on myself. I do not use these things at all. These are keepers. These are things I do not use. Do not use. Um, yeah, this one actually does have a serial number as well. So this one is going to be uh, that kind of weird L that's upside down. Um, two, zero, five. And you can see it kind of haphazard. It must have been like a vodka day when they were stamping these things for serial numbers. But it is actually scaled on centimeters. So you can see that. It's scaled on centimeters. And it does have that little hole, like I said, you can use for declination and figure out distance. And it actually does have that little peep sight guy using the front of the blade. And I did actually try that once or twice. And it does actually work. So in terms of actual design aspects, this thing has a lot of tools on board for you to utilize. Now, also the other side of it too... It's Russian execution, which means it is crude. It is very crude in the way that they make this thing. But there's some instance and some instances where they actually get stuff right. Like this sheath right here, man. I, I know I've got to break it in. And I've been really charitably gentle to this thing because I'm trying not to dog it out because I don't know if I can even replace it. I saw it on eBay. I think I picked up this sheath for like 20 bucks. And the guy actually was in Russia, okay? It's a good design, though, man. It's actually very good execution. Has another pocket on board for, like, a sharpening steel or a stone or something. And it is going to be on your side without beating you to death. And it is actually good kit. Hopefully, it was staying in view. But I want to give you guys kind of a, a rough thing here about the, the you know, the, the Russian Spetsnaz machete. And the thing is, the Spetsnaz supposedly never really fielded one. I think they experimented kind of like the... Uh, the, uh, the Buckmaster, and it was just it was just not right. They preferred other knives. Now, it is currently made by a company called Kilslar. I think it is. Hang on one second. Let me find the actual. Um, K-I-Z-L-Y-A-R. So, 
Kilziar, Kilziar, or whatever that is. Excuse me, guys, if you speak Russian, I'm really tearing it up. But Kilziar, um, Alligator Z90. And they do make another one that looks very similar to it. The basic difference is the blade is longer and skinnier with very similar design aspects. They lost the teeth on the backside, I guess because they figured the heaven saw teeth really just doesn't work. Um, but it's Kilziar answer to the ever-growing demand for the height quality Kildar machete. Instead of manufacturing another cane cutter type machete, the designers worked hard to manufacture a blade that can be used as a machete and also in practical uses as a knife may have. So it was also born the Cayman. Uh, Cayman seemed a compact machete, four or five millimeters long, but when it comes to chopping, it just didn't do it. So they needed more blade. Um, Cayman is introduced. They said the other thing came out the military version named the alligator. The alligator, if you look up the K I Z L Y A R, Killslar alligator Z90, you'll see a picture of the latest iteration of this. The handle is so much better. The blade design is very similar, and you'll see the gradual progression. Now, I'm actually going to post a picture of a scan I did on my, um, my Google Plus, so you guys can read this. But I actually do have an article here, a reprint of an article from the 1997 January issue of American Survival Guide, where they were talking about this thing. And they said basically the functions. Let me go from A to Z. A, the tip, can be sharpened and shaped to be used as a mini shovel to strike and to throw. Flat blade can be used for blunt strikes in combat. Thin saw to cut through metal or bone. Yeah, right. Uh, curved shape on the blade, which is on the inside edge, can be used for very close combat, enable to raise your arm straight, you use this, that, and the other thing. Basically, you can use it for, like, grab and CQB. Uh, sharp view curve above the guard allows you to hook the belt strop of his machine gun. Yeah, that's wishful thinking. Uh, thinking of curving of the blade tip to, uh, when keep it from slipping out of the hand, wet chopping, this, that, and the other thing. Cap on screws, hollow space inside, usually contains, contains matches, fishing line, and hooks, and other useful items. Hole in the spike tip can be used for fishing line. Yeah, right. Uh, the small spike and a small bayonet can be reversed as shown, used for throwing weapon as a nice pick when mountain climbing. Removed is use for a screwdriver or an opener. Hard to see in the photo, but the blade is marked in degrees from 0 to 90 to focus as a compass or for orientation. The thick double saw to cut through wood works on push or pull in combat to hook or pull on clothing. Uh, all BS, no BS ski, tool weapon. Uh, Vladimir Vesilev graciously provided me some of the complimentary on the special machete, some valuable input from Mick Siegler, President Sovetsky Collection. Now, the Sovetsky Collection website, I don't know if it's still up or not, but the Siegler.com site is down. So if you guys try that on the bottom of the page, you will not find anything. Prior to the development of the machete, the Russian army used the bayonet as an all-purpose tool weapon. The goal is to provide and have an instrument good for combat and survival. All defensive or offensive combat's purposes. The special group worked on the creation of the machete with the, uh, the Spetsnaz units. The main goal was to produce the use of a multifunctional weapon with the widest provided possible scope of use. Characteristics of the machete formed from very strong durable metal, special high carbon steel, designed to never need sharpening under normal use. Yeah, right. Uh, made into a very particular shape. Oh, I'll give them that. Uh, size allows for easy transportation. It's, it's a tank, guys. It's a tank. Uh, wait, heavy enough to cut through, chop, strike, poke, throw. It's a tank. <laughs> Truly multifunctional. See for the picture or the details. Yeah, well, that's nice. Um, oh, I've missed a couple things. The keyhole is used for compass markings, measuring angles. Also, as a wire stripper. Mm, larger, larger hole is used for nail removal. Yeah, like, you're really going to use this hole to yank out nails when you're looking at a sharp edge. Don't think so. Uh, straight... Shape on the blade was used to strike a combat, which is room th where it was room to move the whole arm. Blade the blade, marked for measuring in centimeters, guard for hand protection. Ripped handle for easier and... Oh, ripped. Ribbed. Ripped. <laughs> ripped handle for easier and tighter grip. Okay, folks, in, in terms of the actual combat effectiveness aspects, I'm going to say the P.O. and U is P.U. Uh, but the Spetsnaz Machete, Russian Machete, is a very cool collector piece. Would you ever truly wish to use it in combat? Probably not. Mostly because now it's collectible, and also because there's a lot of aspects it just doesn't do the best on. There's better knives out there. There's alternatives to these guys. Uh, the Becker, um, was it the Becker prying tool, whatever, is a very close car carryover to this. And there's another one out there that's very close to this. I think it's a, um, a K-Bar. It's very similar to the, the BK tools. But all these things are very much 
Well, they're better, okay? I'm gonna break up with this one, folks. Be good. Keep the centering as always, always. You know what you love it. Mmm. Russian Spetsnaz Knife Blog. See you guys. Oh, you think I'd forget?